Okay, so we've gone through the divisions of a muscle. We've talked about a muscle cell and all the structures within it. So now, how does a muscle contract? So uh, this is called the sliding filament model. Um, and you're gonna see why here in just a moment. So when a muscle contracts, we're really just moving the myofibrils. As each myofibril moves, um, it shortens the sarcomere. And if I shorten all of my sarcomeres, then my muscles shorten. Big thing to keep in mind, muscles only shorten when they contract. I never contract any muscle by lengthening it. Okay, keep that in mind. So this sliding filament is when actin and myosin slide past each other. Uh, so it all starts here, some, a place called the neuromuscular junction. So first of all, as a neuron, we've talked about what neurons are. Remember, they can communicate for our body. They have a couple different parts. Uh, the big one that we're concerned with is the axon. The axon extends from the cell body, and it takes a message to what we want to affect, in this case, the muscle. Okay? Uh, and in specific, we're using motor neurons uh, for muscle contraction. Each skeletal muscle is connected to an axon, okay? And each muscle is connected to a bunch of different nerve, or excuse me, different neurons, okay? So within your muscle, think your bicep, there's tons of different neuromuscular junctions, and they're all going to shoot or fire these signals to get your muscle to contract. Uh, at the neuromuscular junction, we have this place called the synapse. It's this tiny little gap between the end of the axon and the muscle cell. Uh, and what's going to travel across there are some neurotransmitters, which we'll get to in just a second. Oh, we'll get to it right here. They release a neurotransmitter there at that synapse, and that neurotransmitter travels from the axon to the muscle cell at a place called the motor end plate. So the, the neuromuscular junction is the spot where the axon meets the motor end plate of the muscle fiber. Each fiber has one motor end plate, okay? So, uh, and each of these motor end plates uh, are receiving a signal from that, that, um, that neuron. But remember that a neuron can have multiple axons, so therefore a, a neuron could affect multiple muscle fibers at the same time. A motor unit is the neuron plus all of its fibers together. So like I just said, it could connect to more than one, and it, it usually will. So that whole thing together is called the motor unit, and it can be a group of mu muscle fibers connected to one neuron. And then we have this thing, oh, I'm sorry, called the synaptic cleft. Uh, really, that synapse and synaptic cleft are pretty much one and the same. It's the space between the neuron and the muscle fiber. So here you go, here's a neuron. We've talked about these before, but notice the, uh, this neuron has multiple axon terminals. So each of those axons would connect to a different muscle fiber. This is what our neuromuscular junction is gonna look like. I have the axon coming down, uh, but on the muscle fiber, which is the big pink thing here, okay, I have a motor end plate, and that motor end plate, notice there's a little itty bitty space between them. Uh, that space between it is the synaptic cleft or the synapse. On the right-hand side, you see the motor unit. Notice that this neuron is connected to a bunch of different muscle fibers. Uh, that whole thing forms one motor unit. The neurotransmitter we're going to use is called acetylcholine. When I want to contract my muscles, uh, I am going to release acetylcholine from the axon, and that acetylcholine is going to travel across to the motor end plate. Uh, that will be released into the synaptic cleft, and it's going to combine with these things, <coughs> excuse me, called acetylcholine receptor sites. Uh, and the, that is where the acetylcholine will travel across to, and once that connection is made, it's almost like plugging in a lamp. Okay, that's the electricity that we need for our muscle to contract. So the acetylcholine, it's stored in these things called vesicles. They're called synaptic vesicles. When that, those synaptic vesicles release the acetylcholine, the acetylcholine goes across the space, across the synaptic cleft. Uh, when it hits the motor end plate at the acetylcholine receptor sites, we now have electricity. We now have the uh, impulse being sent into our muscle cell. Okay, this is what's going to cause a muscle contraction. So you see here a little flow chart of how it's going to work. The impulse goes, it, once it hits the motor end plate, that impulse goes into the sarcolemma, which is the cell membrane of the uh, muscle cell. 
It will then travel down the T-tubules. And if you remember the T-tubules, which are the things that are going to uh, take that impulse deep into the muscle fiber, uh, which is going to travel to the cisterni. Remember, cisterni are on each side of the T-tubule. Cisterni uh, is going to transmit that that message to the rest of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and then into the sarcoplasm. And what we're going to see is that it's going to start releasing calcium uh, when all this happens. Okay. And I'm going to save that for our next video.